Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? Oh my gosh, what a day. What a day it has been. My husband just got home about 20 minutes ago from visiting his friend after work. Current time when I came out here was 10 till 8. It's a very late vlog today. <laughs> and it's still bright out though. Can you believe this? It's 10 till 8 and it's still bright. And it has been <clears throat> muggy, rainy off and on today. Not heavy rain, but just like sprinkling here and there. Not a very pretty summer day. Um, and it's been about 90 all day today. And so I didn't look at the temperature right before I came out here. I have been... It's just been kind of a crazy day. I have been having a lot of phone calls with a lot of friends about different stuff today. And um, I talked to Tiny for a long time and talked to my sponsor for a long time and all this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's just been, it's been a day. And have been doing a lot of laundry today and cleaning up around the house. Took Boo Radley out several times. And then I finished five videos and this is my sixth video today. So I wasn't really sure what I wanted to film on my drama video today. Um, I talked about this on here yesterday. I actually just made some iced coffee. This is the first coffee that I've had. Hey, this is the first coffee that I've had. In, this girl was just dry, uh, uh, riding by on this like vintage, it looked like a vintage Schwinn bike. It was real cute. It was like uh, like light blue, like Tiffany blue. It was really cute and had a little basket in front of it and stuff like that. Anyway, she was like, wave it at me. Um, yeah, this is like the first coffee. I put it in my, see, see it's, all, look, look how hot it is out here. I put it in my little pee, -pee cup. I love this cup so much that somebody sent me. Um, now I totally forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, I was talking about this on my vlog yesterday about how I got recommended all these videos um, about, it was like people's last videos. Um, before they passed away and their like channels were dedicated to their like so a lot of them had started their channels before this but then they would get diagnosed with like some terminal illness like cancer or something like that and they would you know talk about their doctor's appointments and whatever it's i mean it's really really intriguing to watch and very interesting and all of these people just have such hope and amazing spirit you know and um it was interesting because somebody said on the comment the comment section in the video yesterday they said why don't you clear your search section, your your watch search watch videos, and then they'll go away. I was like, oh, like that never occurred to me, but thank you for that suggestion. Um, because I have to tell you, like I got on YouTube again last night and it was just more of it. It was just like more. And um, I just kind of fell down the rabbit hole. I ended up watching this whole channel that's a hospice nurse and she was talking about all this kind of stuff. And then, um, I was watching all these people like there's a lot of people that have like their last videos before they pass away <clears throat> and um, their love for their audience and their love for just having been able to vlog their journey is just I mean this one guy in there the comments were just like threaded when he said this like with this comment because he said I, he apologized for dying and he's like I just love this so much and you guys have been so nice to me um, and it was interesting because when I first started watching them the night before, they made me really sad. Like I couldn't stop watching them because I kind of felt bad. Like I said that, you know, but last night it was, it was something completely different when I was watching them. Um, and I don't know if it was my state of mind. I walked for a very long time last night. I got a really good walk in last night. Listen to like an hour and a half of my audiobook. I've got an hour and a half left for the Thursday Murder Club. I'm loving that book by Richard Osman. But I sat out here for a while and I watched some of these videos and I just, um, it gave me a different perspective on living and on life and on gratitude and appreciating the people that we spend our time with and in each and every single moment of our lives how important they are and um I don't know it just it really inspired me and so I kind of wanted I went in today into my drama video talking about how these videos had really impacted me that on my drama channel I even referenced over here a little bit that I wanted to do 
some videos, um, you know, more about more serious topics on my, my Peter Mon channel. I love doing the drama. I love having an opinion about things and talking about influencers and pop culture. Like, that's a lot of fun to me, right? And I also think for, I get so many comments from people that will say, you know, when you're flipping fans and you're telling jokes and you're being a little shady and whatever, like, I laugh and I've, I've had a really hard day or I'm going through this or I'm going through that and it's really helpful to me. I won't stop that, right? Um... Because I love that piece of it. It's like, even when I like do my review videos, my review videos are so stupid. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, it's like, I don't take those seriously at all. They're so stupid, but I, I do love reviewing new things, but they're so silly and so stupid. I have so much fun in there, right? And it's interesting because I get so many cameos from people that will be like, can you do the boom, boom, boom at the front? Because, you know, like my sister or my wife loves you so much and she loves the, because in my review channel, if you don't watch it, I'm like, I do these boom, 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 boom things. And so they'll be like, can you do the boom, boom, booms and the cameo and whatever? And I love that so much that people ask for that. It's like, it's so endearing, right? And, um, I don't know. I just, I love the, the fun part of it, but I also think it's important to talk about more serious topics. Um, I wanted to, there's a video that I've been wanting to do about my OCD and my progress working through it. And I talked to my therapist. I think I, I shared this on here. I talked to my therapist and he was like, maybe you sh could make a video and share with other people like the progress you've had and what worked for you and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, like I could do that. And he was like, but it would also be good for you because then you would have something to refer back to in case it, you know, it comes up and your flares up in your life again. Then you could remind yourself like what got you through it when you worked through it. And I was like, that's a really valid point, you know? And so I thought about putting that video on my Peter Dustup channel. I actually was planning on putting it up there. And actually I have a list in my phone of like each channel, like videos to make. And um, that was on that one. And also on there was, um, but I think I'm gonna move that video over to my Peter Mon channel and I'm gonna, um, because I think it'll reach more people and maybe somebody that needs to hear it will hear it. Um, and then I also wanted to do a video about bullying and I wanted to talk about um, having gone through bullying and um, then talking to the my one main bully and things like that. Um, there's a whole video that I want to do around that. Not like as like, oh, me the victim, but like what I learned from that experience. Like what it taught me going through that when I was younger, how it made me stronger. I'm not somebody that... Um, I'm not gonna say I never have played like the victim in my life because I obviously have it many times in my life, you know? And I look back on that. But today, I try to look at things that I've gone through and see what I can learn from that so that that experience in my life didn't just exist for no reason or no meaning, right? Can I apply some meaning to it? Is there something that I can learn from it? I actually got a comment. Um, it, was on, it was on this channel. I was looking through my comments last night from like the last couple of vlogs. And I think it was talking when I was talking about me being bullied and that people really didn't know how bad I was bullied and at that time and that I had somebody that was uh, really like pursuing me and following me home and making me very sexually uncomfortable and threatening me and things like that. And I talked about how like I went to my high school reunion and a lot of people apologized to me. People that I didn't even remember that were mean to me in high school apologized to me. And then I had sat down with the guy that bullied me and like we're good friends today and you know he like shared with me what was going on in his life and things like that and i got this comment from somebody on there and they said uh i wish i had my phone with me but i'm uploading a video inside um the phone the comment said something like <clears throat> i mean it wasn't like a nasty comment or anything like that it was just an observation and they said something like um We've all gone through this. I'm glad that you got what you needed from and got your apologies or whatever, and I hope that you can move on from this or something. And it was kind of this interesting comment to me, you know, because of that perception. And I think, like, that's the thing. And to anybody out there that feels that way, like, we've all gone through that, I want to make this very clear. Like, I have talked a lot. I've extensively talked about bullying. Um, I used to go to school administrators and talk about it with my experience. Um, it's something in Indianapolis that people know me for. Like, I, I've gone and spoken to a lot of different organizations about bullying and things like that. Um, 
years ago I used to do that, talk about bullying in workplaces, even though I wasn't bullied in a workplace, explaining what that, that, um, that, uh, culture looks like, the culture of bullying, you know, and things like that. It's something I'm very versed in. Um, the reality is that for years and years and years, I thought it was something that everybody experienced. I thought everybody went through it. So I should just shut my mouth and, keep, and stop complaining about it. It's, that's not the case. And to that person out there that left that comment or anybody else that feels that way, what I want to say to you is, I'm really sorry that you never got the apologies that you, that you deserve, because you do. Um, and it wasn't just the apologies for me, and I'll get to that in just a second. It was so much more than that that I got from it, right? Like, it was, a, well, I guess I'll say this right now. It was an understanding of sitting down with this man, right, as grown-ups, as adults. And, I mean, I was, like, 40 at the time, you know, 30, 38, 40 or something like that. And sitting across from him with all this resentment and this anger and this pain that I had felt and him explaining to me what he went through at that time. This is why I feel like, you know, I was saying this in my, my drama video. So what I was saying about my drama video was that I wanted to make this video about this community of these videos that I had found on YouTube and it ended up turning into something completely different. It ended up turning into, and I also wanted to say at the end of the video that I, that I felt on that drama channel, I wanted to start using that channel for for getting deeper messages out there about things in my life that, you know, I'd gone through and experienced and whatever. But going back to the bullying thing with him, like, it wasn't really, to be honest with you, I mean, 20 some years later, the apology didn't really mean a whole lot to me, in all honesty. I mean, anybody apologizing to me 20 years later was a little too little too late. Um, I mean, it didn't really, it didn't really hit on any kind of thing. Um, you know, I'm an adult that has common sense. I realize that those were cruel things that kids did at that time. And I think they, I, I realized looking back that they didn't realize the impact it had on me. It was just funny to them. Um, but I want to make this very clear. The one person that pursued me and followed me home and threatened me, that was terrifying to me. The rest of it made it like terrifying because I, I just would go to school every day. I didn't know what was going to happen. That was scary to me. But it was never scary to me like I thought my life was in jeopardy. With him, I felt like my life was in jeopardy. And I said in that video, I've never heard from him. I don't know where he is today. Um, and so, and, and and I mean, if he reached out to me, I I don't know. I, I guess, I mean, if he reached out to me and said I'd like to have a conversation about it, it just was so strange. It just was so strange. You know, like, it was nobody that anybody would have guessed. And so, I don't know what that conversation would be today. Like... I feel for him and what he went through at that time. I don't think it was justified that he treated me the way that he did, but I think that he was living out of fear. I think a lot of people live out of fear, you know? In recovery, we talk about a hundred forms of fear. And so I get that. Um, but it wasn't the apology that anybody gave me from bullying. I mean, in all honesty, too much time had gone by. I had long ago forgiven those people. Um, it wasn't healthy for me to stay in anger anymore towards people that had done something to me 20 years before. It was like when I went to my reunion and I took my friend with me and all these people were talking to me and apologizing to me and I'm so sorry and you're so cool today and all this kind of stuff, right? And I'll never forget my friend who always had my back in high school was standing right there and she was like, I can't believe that you're talking to these people. And after she said it like three or four times, I was like, girl, do you want to stay bitter for the rest of your life? Like, I don't. Like, I don't want to stay bitter for the, the next 60 years of my life over some stuff that happened to me when I was a kid that still impacts me today. Yes, right? But, like, they've gone on and they've lived, they're they living their lives. Like, that's literally the epitome of, like, drinking poison, hoping the other person dies. Like, I don't want to continue to live in that. I, I mean, if these people have, are changed people and they're not mean kids like they were in 1987, like, why should I continue to live in 1987? I'm the one that suffers, Right? What I got from him by sitting down there and him talking to me about his kids, and that was the changing thing. The way it all came out was, it was at the time, like, on Facebook when people were posting those notes and stuff like that, and it was like 10 things people didn't know about me on high school, and then they would tag you on that stuff, remember? And it was like, I did one of those, and I posted it, and I was friends with, like, all these people from high school friended me. Like, anybody. People I wasn't even friends with. Like, I still to this day. I just, like, last week got a friend request from somebody that I'm not in high school. I, like, 
I hardly ever, I don't post shit on Facebook ever. I don't even know the last time I post on there. In fact, I saw this friend of mine not too long ago. He goes, well, you're not really on Facebook, are you? Because you never post. <laughs> I'm like, well, I know you post because you are literally live on the Facebook 14 times a day, <laughs> right? I'm not that person. If you are, hey, more power to you, okay? Um, but I'm not that person. I love Instagram. I love, you know, resharing the stuff on the Instagram stories. Facebook's not where I live. I just don't, I don't enjoy it that much. But I do look and see what people are doing and stuff like that, right? And so, um... I had this shirt on earlier. I had this like uh, sober shirt that I was like filming in and I took it off because I was like, okay, I don't want to film this because it's kind of tight. And this was the only t-shirt that I had. No, this is the t-shirt that I wore all day yesterday and the t-shirt that I like walked in last night and stuff like that. <laughs> I guess I could have picked a clean t-shirt to come out here, but I'm going to walk again tonight and Alex and I are going to watch uh, The Real Housewives of Dubai too. I got to finish that book tonight. I'm so excited to finish that book. That, those Richard Osman books are really good. The Thursday Murder Club books. So, you know, that's kind of my mentality. And so when I um, sat down and I talked to him, okay, so I did this post on Facebook and it was like 10 things people didn't know about me on high school. I don't, honestly don't even remember what I put on there, but I do remember that like the last two, and I remember I was like scared to put this up. That's so pathetic that like in my late thirties, I was scared to post something like this on Facebook. The last thing I put up was something like, I don't even know if it's there. I think I like took it down years ago, but it was either like the last two, I think the la the, the ninth, it was like 10 things. The ninth one was something like every day I went to school, I was afraid because I didn't know what was going to happen to me. And the 10th one was I was afraid to walk across the stage at graduation because I was afraid that people were going to call me the F word. Um, and then my mom would have to hear it and she would know in that moment what I had lived through for the last 12 years. That was what I put on there about what people didn't know about me in high school. And that was one of my fears. I didn't want to, I didn't want to walk the stage at graduation. I didn't even want to go to my graduation because I was so terrified that in that moment, I mean, I honest to God, I mean, I don't like, it was daily for me, you guys, like really bad, like markers on my locker with the whole word on my car things. I mean, it was bad, right? I would like walk into, uh, they had like little nicknames for me and stuff like that. I would walk into the cafeteria, they'd all shout it, they'd all shout the F words. Teachers, administrators never did anything. I think the teachers and administrators were afraid of them too, if you want to know the truth, never did anything. I don't blame the teachers and the administrators for that, in all honesty. I think that they're, they're, they're student, they had too many students, they didn't know how to handle it, and they weren't given any kind of protocols on how to handle it. I think that's why they just, I mean, I had teachers full on sit there and just look at me while, while kids would just call me the most horrendous names. I mean, if I, I, I can't say it because of the video being on YouTube, but if I told you guys some of the things that they said to me, I mean, like, literally sitting in a classroom. I mean, I can remember this one kid. He was, like, three years younger, two years younger than me. I think it was when I was a senior and he was a sophomore. And um, he hated me. This kid hated me because I was dating this girl that she ended up coming out and being a lesbian. But I was dating her. He had a crush on her. And he hated me. This kid hated me. And I'll never forget. He said some stuff to me in class. I mean, the teacher literally, and I loved this teacher. She literally stood there. She didn't know what to say. And he said the most horrendous stuff to me. Literally in class. Was like, I hope you bend over and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I was like, I didn't even know what to say. I mean, it was ridiculous, the, the stuff that I dealt with. So I was terrified that I was going to walk across the stage at graduation. And that this was the other thing, okay? That right before I graduated, we had these things called senior wills. I think I've talked about this on here before. Senior wills were like, you wrote like a paragraph to all your friends, okay? They were like wills, like last will and testament, right? But you're graduating. So you would will all your friends little funny stuff, right? Like Judy Smith. I, I Peter Mon, will Judy Smith. But she put everybody's name in there, right? Like UB40, uh... I don't know, the Sex Pistols, Susie and the Banshees, Saturday nights walking around the circle downtown, or smoking clove cigarettes. It was all like personal stuff, right? Well, I came to school and those wills came out. That was like the day before our graduation, two days before that. It was like our last day of school or something. I came to school and those wills came out because it's like, you know, everybody did them. And they were stapled in the corner. Me and my friends, we all did them too, right? And I came, I just found them. Now, I'm in the basement. I came to school. 
And I remember walking through the hallway, you know like when you see this in TV shows and it's like it doesn't seem believable? When like everybody's like whispering and looking at you? That was literally the day for me. And I was like, what is going on? And I remember this like friend of mine came up to me and she was like, come here. And she like pulled me into a corner and she like showed me. That guy that I met with had willed my ass to the football team. And then there were all these personal jokes between all the football players and all the wrestlers and stuff like that about my ass. And it was just, it was... I couldn't even believe that the school let it be printed. I mean, in all honesty, I was like, the school absolutely, like, just confirmed my biggest fear for me that nobody was going to protect me at school. They let this, this was not students printing this. Like, they had to take it to the, the, to the, the school printed these off and passed them out to everybody. I just, I couldn't believe it. I was like, so my fear was that I was going to walk across stage at graduation and somebody, like, they were going to have, they had this collaborated effort that they were all going to yell the F word when I walked across and get, got my diploma. I was terrified, right? And my mom, who was so proud of her kid, was going to be sitting there and I had sheltered my mom from every bit of me being bullied. My dad had some clue, but my mom was so, I mean, she had no clue, right? She knew I, you know, was different and edgy and had crazy hair and my friends were different and stuff like that and she loved all my girlfriends. And, you know, but she, she had never once, like, known anything about that. In fact, years later, we had a conversation about it. And she said, tell me who they are and I'll call their parents. I was like, mother. Like, I was like 30 at the time. I was like, seriously? No. <laughs> you know? And so, I was scared of that. And so, I put it on that thing. Well, he reached out to me. I think I might have said something in there like I was scared every day and the, I think the ninth thing was like I was scared every day to go to school because I didn't know what this one person was gonna I think it was like that I said something like that and I knew posting it that I was friends with him on Facebook because he had friended me and or maybe he friended me after that I was friends with his wife I can't remember how it happened but anyway it's been too long now he um but he reached out to me and he was like I read your thing I, I can't remember how he said it I could go back and look and messenger and see but he was like I'm so sorry I have daughters of my own I would never want them treated that way could we meet for coffee and we did and I remember I was like so scared of it and he was so nice and um, we sat down and we talked we had a long talk and I remember he asked me first like a lot of like what it was like for me like he didn't put it on him make excuses whatever like he asked me like tell me what it was like for you and I told him like in detail you know and, and even then, I never did tell about that guy. I mean, just recently, have I, like, in video, started talking about the couple last couple of years, so I started talking about the guy that, like, threatened me, and I haven't even told the whole thing. I'm, like, I'm still, it's so weird. Like, I'm still, like, inside, like, it's so weird how you're, like, kind of protective of the people that hurt you the most, and, like, I mean, I have no clue where this person is, and I still have never gotten on video and told the whole story. I don't know. Maybe I should. Maybe one day. There's a part of me that feels like I don't know what he was going through at that time. You know, maybe he lived in a world where for him he could never come out. I don't know. I don't know what that was about, you know? I was comparing it to the uh, 13 Reasons Why, the show and the book and stuff like that. It was very similar to that for me. And so, anyway, sitting down with this guy, I never told him th about that story, but I told him a lot of what had happened and how he made me feel and things like that. I was always the, it was always a joke, like, to him, right? Like, he would come in and he would lisp, and his 10 friends would be behind him in the cafeteria, and he'd be like, so I'm free on Saturday night. Like, do you want to, like, come and hang out? And, like, we could, like, you could come over and you could, like, suck my dick. And so I'm like... I mean, and I'm just sitting there, right? Like, I don't know what to say. I'm like this shy, socially awkward kid. Everybody in the cafeteria is laughing at me. You know, my girlfriends would stand up and they get real, like, you know, riotous about it and stuff like that. It just was like, I didn't know what to do. It was terrifying for me. Every day. This was every day of my life, okay? Whether it was in the cafeteria, the gym, the hallway, it was always somewhere, okay? Every, out, walking outside to my car, everywhere. It was that. It was always some joke, right? I mean, so much so that I had people years later, when this man was married and had kids, would say to me, I always thought he was gay. Didn't he have a crush on you in high school? I was like, no, that was him bullying me. Like, that's how people didn't even get it. It was like, I mean, they knew it was a joke, but it was like overboard, right? So... He explained to me a lot of what was going on in his life. That's not mine to share on video, but he was going through his own private hell at home, and I didn't know that. Not that that makes it right. It doesn't, right? But it explains it. It makes it, makes it make sense to me. For me, it doesn't have to always be right or wrong or give an excuse for me to understand something. I want to understand something, right? And so when I sat down there and I talked to him, and he told me about 
not really feeling like he got a lot of attention at home or that he didn't really feel like people cared about him and he came to school and he was a court gesture, jester and that he was getting a lot of laughs and I was just the easy pick for that, right? Then I realized it really never was personal, ever, for all those years that all those people did it. Hurt people hurt people. And it was in that moment that I really understood, like deeply, I mean, I think I understood that before, but like I really deeply understood it, that it really was never personal to him. I was just a medium that he was using to get some laughs and attention because he, he needed that, because he wasn't getting that at home. Is it excusable for the hell that I lived through? Absolutely not. Did, was an apology good enough? Absolutely not. I didn't even really need one at that point, right? But it was the understanding in that moment of why I went through what I went through. It didn't take it away. It didn't excuse it. The scars were there. It had already happened, right? But it made me understand what I had gone through. And in some way, this is going to sound strange, but it almost kind of gave it purpose and meaning. Like, it wasn't just like, oh, we don't like Peter, let's pick on him. Like, that to me is so baffling, that you just pick out a random person because you don't like them, and you just pick on them. Like, that's so that's so bizarre to me, right? But it made me understand that, because that's what I always thought it was. I just thought it was like, there's something about me that's unlikable or love, unlovable. There's something that's wrong with me. It was always about me. But in that moment, what I realized was it was never about me to begin with. I just was the easy target. I mean, I can literally remember on days where like, this is gonna sound so bad, but I remember this girl that she had her period, okay, and she was wearing white jeans. She was the target that day, it wasn't me. I remember the days. I remember, hey, I remember when somebody done shit their pants in school and stuff like that. I remember those days vividly because it what the attention wasn't on me on that day. It was just always on who's the easy target, right? But most days it was me. And so that gave it understanding. That gave it meaning. Not that it was okay. You know, it's like Oprah's definition of forgiveness. Forgiveness is accepting that what happened in the past happened. Not that it was okay but that it happened, accepting that it happened. Now, what are you gonna do so that you're no longer held hostage to the past? Like the person said in the comment, like I hope that you get through this somehow. Well, I'm through it, but I think it's important for me to continue to talk about it. I think what, that the misconception is that if I talk about it, people think I'm still stuck in it. Really, a lot of times why I talk about it is to share it with other people. I can tell you when the camera's turned off, I ain't worrying about being bullied in the past or talking about it. I just really don't. I don't go to talk to organizations today. If somebody asks me, I would. I don't get asked anymore. Um, I mean, that was a big part, you know, that was when bullying was a huge thing back in the day and I was like advocating for anti-bullying campaigns and I talked a lot about it and that's why my name was out there a lot. If somebody asked me to talk about it today, I would. But that's one of the reasons why I share the story to explain other things that I've gone through. It's not that I'm still stuck in it today, right? I've been sober for 29 years. Like, you wouldn't tell an alcoholic or an addict, quit talking about being sober. Like, okay, well, I'm a recovering victim of bullying. <laughs> And I know that that might sound crazy to some people that I just said that, but that's the truth, okay? When you have, you know, recovering victims of abuse, you don't minimize their abuse. So please don't minimize what I went through. But what made me sad about the comment that I got was that, it, and I think to, to that person and to anybody else out there, what I would want to say to you is, it was never about the apology. The apology didn't mean shit to me when I got it, if you want to know the truth. It was nice that they attempted to rectify their wrongs, it was nice to know that those people had grown up and they were human beings. Did I really think that they understood the implications of what they had done to me? No, not at all. I think he did. And he's really the only person I ever sat down with and talked. There was like one other person I sat down and talked to a little bit, but it wasn't that deep. He was the only one. And then went above and beyond. I mean, he went to everything. This is during the time of like marriage equality, trying to get past. He went to everything that Alex and I went to. We, I mean, Alex and I were at rallies. We were all this kind of stuff. He would show up to everything to the point where one day I called him. He, he like asked me, he called me up and asked me about like when the date was. I said, you listen, go home, be with your kids, be with your wife. I said, I appreciate everything you have done above and beyond to show that you're a changed person. You don't need to do this. He goes, he goes, no, I want to. I said, don't. I said, you don't, what it would mean to me is show up for your kids, you know, be the husband and the father that I never thought that you would turn into being the asshole of the kid that you were. He said, I can do that. That, that's powerful to me, right? Change is powerful to me. I don't want to stay stuck and all that stuff, but it was really never about the apologies to me. It was understanding that it was never personal. And, and that's what I would want anybody to realize out there. It's not, it's not about you. 
you know? And a lot of hate in this world is not about the person that it's directed to. You know, even like when you look at really violent crimes that occur, it's really never really about, I mean, in, in some isolated incidents, it is about that person it's directed. But I'm talking about random violent, you know, incidents. The, cam the camera stopped. Um, it's really, I don't know why the camera is doing this, but it usually just like starts like that. But now it's like pausing and starting. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the heat or something. I don't know. But anyway, um... You know, in random isolated incidences where, like, serial killers, like, look for and identify their victims, sure, but, like, it's not, like, in most cases, with, like, random assaults and stuff like that, I hate this person so much, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that happens, but that's pretty rare, honestly, you know? It's convenience is usually what it is, and that's what it was with me. It was convenience. I was the I was convenient target of the harassment. Um, when it's personal, when it goes into a personal area and it is about you because that person really doesn't like you for one reason or whatever, that's, that's scary and you should probably take that seriously, you know? But I do want to say this one person out there that said, we've all gone through this. For you, okay, I want to say, and to anybody else that feels that way, and I don't mean this critically whatsoever. I just want to clear the air because I felt that for a long time. I felt like I need to get over this. Everybody's gone through this because that's what I was told when I was in school, okay? I would go to the dean's office. I would get in trouble for being bullied and I would get in trouble for instigating it when I never even said a word, right? And the dean would look at me and say, everybody goes through this. This happens to everybody, you know? Bullying happens in schools today, and everybody says everybody's bullied in school. This is just this is a thing that happens with kids. This happens with kids all the time. It's not. I've talked to so many people about it. My cousin Caroline never bullied in school. My husband, he was a dancer on the Fever and for the Fever dance team in high school. He went to four different proms with four different girls. Everybody knew he was gay. He wasn't bullied. He does not relate to my story at all. He, people will call him names from time to time, sure, but he doesn't consider that being bullied because it was never on the level that it was for me. He doesn't understand the hate that I got. He doesn't get it. He never experienced it, never went through it. He's like, nope, that wasn't my experience. You know? Um, my friend Tanya, my friend Tanya grew up in an evangelical church, went to a regular high school, every day had to wear long skirts down to her knees, hair, you know, long, done up, and all this kind of stuff, and whatever. She's not evangelical Christian anymore. She hasn't been for years and years and years, um, ever since, like, high school. But anyway, she got best dressed in high school. I'm like, you're, and she was like, there was like three of us at the school that were like evangelical Christian. And I was like, you guys didn't get bullied? She goes, no. She was like, the boys were constantly asking me out on dates. She was like, I got best dressed in the yearbook that year. She was like, they would joke about how Tawny Jean doesn't come to school unless her penny loafers got a fresh penny in them and stuff like that. She's like, I don't under, she's like, the bullying that happened to you, I don't get it. The majority of the people that I have talked to in my life never experienced any bullying whatsoever, or if they did, it was very minimal. But I lived for years and years and years with this systematic mentality that we tell people that bullying happens to everybody, and that is bullshit, okay? That is why it was so important to me, and I'm not disagreeing with you, because I think what you were saying is it happened to me, it happens to everybody. It, it happened to you, it happened to me, it happens to everybody. Here's this, and, and, and I hope that you hear what I'm saying, because I'm validating for you the pain that you went through. I, for years, bought into that sentiment that everybody goes through that. That's just not the case. It just isn't. And so, until I'm sitting in that therapist's office, and he looked at me and said, did anybody ever suggest to you that maybe you suffered PTSD as a result of bullying? 12 years of abuse. 12 years. You know? It was the first time I ever felt like somebody had, I, that saw me. You know, my mom, when I said it to her, she said, I'll call the parents. Who are they? Those are bad kids, you know, things like that. My dad always stuck up for me. But it's one thing when it's your parents. It's another thing when it's an outsider. I never once in 12 years had any kid ever stand up and say, don't speak to Peter that way, other than my girlfriends. And they were being bullied too. You know, just about different things, about being weird girls and, you know, being punk rock and all that kind of stuff, you know? 
And these guys would look at these girls, my friends in class, and be like, you're never going to get a date. None of my friends would ever go on a date with you. My girls would like, my friends would spit right back at them and be like, do you think any of us want to go on a date with you? I mean, they were so funny. They get, those girls gave me such strength. I wouldn't be here. But I bought into that sentiment for years, okay, that everybody is bullied and it's just part of your childhood. That is bullshit. That is absolutely bullshit. And if you went through that, I'm sorry that you went through that. And I'm sorry that you felt that that was part of the truth. Because the reality is that isn't the truth. It just isn't. And if you were a popular kid in high school, or even if you weren't that popular but you weren't being bullied, you can remember the three or four kids that were bullied consistently. Trust me, you can remember their names. So it, it isn't that. So I wanted to validate that for that person that said that because I used to have that mentality, you know? Oh, everybody's bullied. What are you talking about? Because I thought that was the case because people would say that to me. I'd talk to people and they'd be like, oh, everybody was bullied when we were kids. I don't think they really got it. On the level that I got it, I mean, when you have somebody pulling in your drive yard, your driveway and you're running inside because they're like, if, if you don't let me fuck you, I'm going to tell everybody at school that you came on to me and then I'm going to beat your ass in the parking lot. Like, that's pretty fucking scary, Okay. I mean, we have words for those things today. In 1990, a boy talking about that, what, what, who was I going to tell? And that happened on multiple occasions. He's in my face, okay, at my car, in the parking lot of school, following me home, tailing me home, getting right up in my ear, spitting in my ear. You're going to do this to me. You're going to do that to me. And if you don't, I'm going to tell everybody that you came on to me. Do you know what the fear of that, of being outed? I mean, that was terrifying to me. And then he was going to, then on top of that, he was going to have to beat my ass for coming on to him. So here I got this giant of a jock going to beat my ass and all this kind of stuff. And all I did was hide. I shut my mouth and hide. And that's what I did for years and years and years because I didn't know any better. I didn't know any better other than just to shut my mouth and not do anything and just run and hide, right? I was so thankful to go to that high school and never have to see that man again, that kid or whatever he was. I don't know where he's at today, you know? Looked him up a few times, stuff like that. And he wasn't the only one. I had, I'll be honest with you, I had other people that pursued me, but not like he did. I, I had another guy that followed me home a couple times in high school and stuff like that. His, his whole deal was completely different. He was going to be like, hey, we'll just keep it on the DL and things like that. I was like, what? And then when he was realized I wasn't, I wasn't down with it, he was like, I mean, you have to remember, I wasn't out in high school, okay? Like, so that was going to be, I mean, I was not stupid. And so I can remember being like, the second time it happened, like, it clicked for him. Like, I wasn't going along with this, right? And he was like, I'm going to fucking kick your ass. And I mean, it like changed. I could see his face change. I was terrified. Yeah, he followed me home two or three times. That, it was like, that happened a lot. I lived in a wooded lot. Like, my house backed up against the wood in a cul-de-sac. Nobody could see, I pulled my car way back, and nobody could see me back there. It was scary. It wasn't just like I was on a main street. We were on a cul-de-sac. It was heavily wooded. I pulled my car way back into the corner of our parking lot, that, or our driveway, that, like, backed up into the woods. You couldn't see me back there. And these people would drive up right into me, Right. So, I don't know, like, if they knew that my mom didn't come home until after school and whatever. It was scary. It was very scary, you know? Um, so, I know today that that wasn't everybody's experience in high school. But I learned a lot from going through that. I learned a lot from what I went through, you know? And I don't want anybody to, to normalize that for themselves and feel like if, you, if that happened to you, that was normal. You didn't deserve that. Even if everybody did go through that, we didn't deserve that. None of us did. We didn't do anything to ask for that. I think that's cruelty, right? Um, I don't know. Makes me sad, you know? But I have understanding today, and that allowed me to go on then further and educate other people more about, it's not always about understanding or setting, it's not always about having protocol for bullying, it's understanding not just the person that's being bullied, but also the person that's bullying. Like really understanding them. There was a documentary that was put out years ago, I think it was like five girls that were bullying girls in their high schools and stuff like that. It was fantastically done. And explained like their backgrounds and what was going on in their homes and stuff like that. You know, if a kid's grades are failing in school, we want to call home and see what's going on at home. If a kid's not showing up or showing up to school with dirty clothes, we want to call home and find out what's going on home. You know, if this is going on, if that's going on, 
one, we want to make sure, you know, that if the kid's not gotten a haircut in three months, you better call home and make sure that those parents come in here for a, a parent-teacher meeting and find out what's going on. But if that kid's a bully, how often do they ever call those parents and say, hey, is something going on at home? Well, that should be a pretty clear indicator, okay? If somebody else is hurt so bad that they're taking that hurt out on somebody else, some shit is going down at home, okay? Like, that's the reality. And at 51, almost 52 years old today, I get that. It doesn't take away the pain that I went through, but I get that today. It makes it feel less personal to me. It makes me realize it never really was about me. It also makes me realize I never had a chance. You know, there was nothing I could have done to stop, do to stop it. And so, it's a life experience that I lived through, and I'm here today, gratefully, and, um, because there's a lot of people that aren't. When we minimize bullying, there's a lot of people that have taken their lives as a result of it because they couldn't live through it. I don't know why I was the exception to that. I really don't, you know? Um, there's no rhyme or reason. I don't. I, I can't tell you that. I mean, I, I see people that do it all the time that had great support systems and love for their family. I had the same thing. I don't know what it was. I've never been wired to think that way. I've never in my entire life ever once thought about a plan or anything to take my life. I don't know what it is with how it is. Did I, at the end of my addiction, care if I lived or died? No. Did I come with a plan? No. Was I scared of dying? Yes. I've never consciously thought that through. And I've talked to so many people and they're like, I mean, even talked to my therapist about that. He's like, I've never heard anybody that's not, like, not had that thought once, you know? So I don't know what that, that is, you know? It's very similar to me. Why I'm here is very similar to me with the whole, like, HIV thing, right? Like, I have so many friends of mine through the years use protection, didn't use protection, did the things they were supposed to do. Many of them have fewer one night stands than I did, right? Okay, so why did they contract HIV and AIDS and end up dying? Or why are they still here and asymptomatic today? And I'm not, you know? It's not like I didn't have good times too. It wasn't like when I was drinking or using drugs, I didn't forget to, you know, use safer measures time to time. You know, I mean, back in the day, we always did because we were so terrified of it. We always did, but I'm, I'm sure at some point, drinking or drugging that, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, how am I here today, you know? Somebody years ago said something to me. They used, they, they called me some, some nasty, like, AIDS slur kind of thing. And I thought, if that, if that were my reality, if I were HIV positive or I had AIDS, I would full on get on a video and share that story to help other people. I do not think there is anything shameful about that whatsoever. I have many, many friends of mine that are HIV positive. I've had many friends of mine that have passed from AIDS. I don't think that's anything funny to joke about and I don't think there's anything funny about it. And it demolished an entire community of people, millions of people, all right? I don't think there's anything funny about that. I don't think that's anything that you throw into somebody's face. Just like I think it's disgusting when people throw addiction into people's face, right? And um, I, that's nothing to be ashamed of at all. And if that were the case, I would share my story. My story is, I don't know how I, I missed that bullet. I have no clue. I really don't. Because I'm the person it should have happened to, in all honesty. Blackout drinker, having no clue, ended up in people's beds. I didn't know where I was. Most of the nights I didn't, though, because I was so drunk that I just didn't go home with anybody. But there were, there were times, obviously, you know, there were enough. You know, I think that movie Kids back in the day shows that it just takes one time, you know? I mean, I don't know. It's not always sometimes the things that we live through or the things that we go through, it's what we do with them on the other side, you know? But I did want to address that comment because it made me kind of sad for the person that left it. I kind of felt bad for them because I was really under that mentality for a long time. And I hope that they don't take offense to me addressing because I think it's an important comment to address. I mean, and if you take offense to it, I don't really know what to say. I'm sympathizing with you is what I am. I'm saying to you, I feel for you that you think that everybody went through that because I did too. I can tell you there's a lot of people that have never been bullied. There's, I mean, and the, the, the other thing that I, I was interesting was when I realized that really, really got it, was in the workplace. And I, we would go to these seminars on bullying in the workplace. Like there was a, a time that was real popular to talk about, right? And I worked with such a fantastic team. I mean, we had like, I mean, I, we had such great counselors on our team and I had so many good friends, loved our supervisor, things like that. Really healthy environment. And I can remember thinking to myself, 
I don't understand. What is bullying in the workplace, right? Like, that doesn't make sense to me at all. And it, I can remember talking to a friend of mine that was a nurse. Not at the same facility. She worked in a hospital. Like, right around that time. And she was being bullied in the workplace. And it was very much what I experienced. And, like, people wouldn't interact with her. They wouldn't sit with her. They'd call her names under their breath. They'd laugh at her as she walked by. I mean, it was all that stuff. Or not wanting to go into work because of that. She even saw, like, her coworker doing that. Or her, her supervisor doing that with one of her coworkers and stuff like that. And I thought, yeah, sometimes mean kids turn into mean adults. But sometimes they don't, too, you know? Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they grow up. But bullying exists everywhere. Bullying, I think, we talk about it, and we think it just extends to kids in school, you know? And there's, like, this whole hype on, you know, and I talk a lot about it because it's my experience of being bullied for being gay when I wasn't even out, right? I have a friend of ours that she was... Um, pageant winner, things like that. She married us, and um, I adore her so much, and this woman has gone through so much shit in your entire life. You have no idea, and she's finally starting to speak out about it, and I'm so proud about her, proud of her. But, like, when I met her, and, like, I'll never forget, like, sitting down, and she was like, so, like, let's, let's, let's talk, like, you know, she, and she was like, you know, at, she's like 10 years younger than me and stuff like that, and asking me, oh, no, no, probably 15 years younger than me, asking me, she's one of Alex and I's dearest friends. She was the first friend we made as a couple, so that's why we asked her to marry us, because we just had always, like, shared everything with her about our marriage and stuff like that, and so, uh, or about our relationship, and she knew us in and out, and, um, I can remember talking to her, and I said something about being bullied, and she said, I was bullied, too. I'll never forget this, because it was after we went to this, this uh, they used to have this rehab thing on Sundays, this Bella Vita here in town. It was like this pool party. And so one day, she and Alex and I afterwards went and got pizza at this place that she loved, this pizza place in Fortville. It's called, like, Gram Grambionis or Grambonis or something like that. She's like, can we go there and get pizza? And, um... She was the kid that could eat as much as she wanted to, and she never gained weight. And she was literally bullied so hard. Um, it was why she started pageants because she was like, I needed to find some confidence, and I this was my road out of out of this small town that she was in, right? And so she was so bullied so hard in high school, and um, she was like, and she's beautiful, right? I can remember her telling me the story, and I thought, not her, like this did not happen to her, right? Even though I had lived through it, you still, like, you, you, somebody else's experience you want to doubt, right? Because I was like, there's no way. I mean, she's gorgeous. She's beautiful. She gets all this attention. This could never have happened to her. She was like, Peter, it was so bad. It was every single day in school. She was like, you know, people call me skinny. They call me a horse. They call me a giraffe. They would make fun of me. They'd pull in my hair. they push me down. they push me into walls. She was like, it was bad. And I remember, like, after I met her... I, like, we had taken a picture or something, and this other girl that I knew asked me, she was like, how do you know so-and-so? I was like, oh, we just met her, we became friends and whatever, and she goes, I went to high school with her. And I was like, you did? And she was like, Sh I'll never forget this. She was like, she was, like, it was bad. She was, like, bullied really, really bad, like, out of school. Like, she, it, like they were so mean to her in school. Since that, I can tell you, probably 10 or 20 people have come up to me and told me the same story if they went to school with her. You never know what somebody's story is like. And just because I'm gay and I was bullied for being gay, she was bullied for being too skinny. There are people that are bullied for being too heavy. There's people bullied for, you know, being small chested or big chested like my mom was, you know? Or there's people that are bullied for frizzy hair or, you know, all this kind of stuff. It's like watching that movie Under the Bridge and, you know, they're making fun of that girl and a huge part of it is that she's Indian and the one guy, when he, like, pulls her into the water, drowning her, like, yeah, I noticed that she had a hairy back and it's like, and the one police officer is like, that's what you remembered about her, right? Like, that's the thing. You know, and they even show the scene where she's, like, shaving her legs because she's embarrassed because the kids are calling her beast at school and stuff like that. People think that, I mean, and there's a good example of bullying that led to some girl's murder, right? Like, let's not minimize. Like, bullying is such, oh, there's a little bunny rabbit. Hop, 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 hop through the yard. Let's not minimize it. It's a huge deal, you know? I did not think I was going to vlog this long. I told my husband, I said, I'm going to vlog short, and then we'll get in and watch. we got to still watch Dubai last week and this week. Um, so, anyway, but I wanted to address that. I don't want anybody to ever feel like you're isolated or alone by what you're going through, but also don't buy in to what everybody wants you to believe. The reason why 
bullying is not fixed in schools today is because of that mentality that it's just part of childhood and everybody goes through it. That was the mentality in 1980 when I was in elementary school and that's the mentality today. Uh, we have protocols set in place. We don't allow that to happen in our schools and then a kid dies from it, right? So that's, that's BS when they say they'll come that kind of stuff. My friend's friend just came over there with her dog. I bet they're going to the pool or going for a walk. Um, so she used to live there with her. I have a feeling she's going to move back in. She's like her old roommate. Do you hear them out there? I wonder if they're gonna go for a walk. <laughs> I love this neighborhood so much. Okay, so last night I walked, God, I don't even know how long, it was so long. I had such a great walk last night. It's so hot though. And I listened, but I listened to like Total cause I came inside and I was like doing some stuff. I think I got my vlog up real late last night like after midnight or one or something like that, I can't remember. But I came inside and um, like took a shower and put pajamas on, did my prayers and my meditations and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, Tanya called me last night while I was walking. I'm like, she's like, what are you doing? I was like, I am walking. <laughs> I was like, but I didn't want to like not take your call. So I'm like walking and talking to her like this on the phone. I was like, okay, at the end of it, I was like, okay, I got to put my arm down, Tanya, because I'm listening to this audio book and this is too hard for me to like talk to you <laughs> on the phone while I'm walking like this. I want to get back to my book. She was laughing at me. She's like, I'm so proud of you for getting out walking. I was like, yeah, I'm so proud of myself too. So anyway, um, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't rain, I'm going to um, walk tonight, but so I got done with that last night, took a shower, all kind of stuff. Alex and I watched something on TV. What did we watch last night? I have no idea what we watched last night. I do not remember it at all. Was last night RuPaul or was it the night before? Why do I feel like we watched RuPaul last night? I'm stuck right now. Can you guys see it? That's called being stuck. Um, but yeah, I, um, so anyway, he went to bed. I finally, I watched, um, oh no, he got into bed. We watched something, then he got into bed. And I, that was when I took my walk. And when I got back, he was still up. That was when I took my shower, put my pajamas on. And then I went downstairs and was watching all those videos that inspired me to make this drama video today and talk about all that kind of stuff, which turned into something completely different. And then I listened to more of the audiobook, And then I went inside and I watched like three, three, four episodes of Survivor season three. I'm loving it right now. I made a decision that I'm going to start um, on my Peter Watches TV channel. I'm going to start covering every season of Survivor. I did one. I got to go in and do my coverage of season two. And when I finish season three, which might be tonight or tomorrow, I'm going to go in and cover season three. I'm going to I'm going to go through and cover every season of Survivor. That way, because somebody left a comment and they said me and my husband are going back. We're on season four right now. So if any of you want to go back and you want to watch the seasons with me, feel free. They're all on Paramount. They're all free on Paramount. Love you free if you have streaming. They're not free, but you pay for the streaming service. And then when I get done with Survivor, I'm going to go back. I'm going to watch. I, I mean, I have like 40. <laughs> I actually less than 40 now. I have like 30 something seasons to watch. So when I get done, I think I'm maybe actually just at 40 seasons of Survivor. They're only like 14 episodes. They go really quick. When I get done with that, I'm going to go in. I'm going to watch Amazing Race. So plans for tonight. Alex and I are going to watch Dubai. He just heated up some food, so he's probably done with that. We're going to watch the two episodes of Dubai. Then I'm going to take my walk and listen to my audiobook, And then come back, take a shower, and watch Survivor. Yeah. So... I've already got my list of videos that I'm making tomorrow and things like that, and it'll be a good day. I can't believe I filmed so many videos today. Six videos total today. So, if it's real nice tomorrow, I might go to the pool tomorrow. We'll see. But I don't think it's supposed to because it's been cloudy and rainy all day today. So, all right. I'm going to get off here now, and um, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing, what is today, Tuesday? Tuesday, and um, if nobody else has told you this, is it Tuesday? Yeah. If nobody else, I'm like, is it Monday? Is it Tuesday? Monday I got my hair cut. That was just right. If nobody else has told you this today, I love you, and um, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you, and um, I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you.